Here are 25 workout and dieting tips for people who actually hate working out and dieting, David. When you are talking about people who hate working out and dieting, you are referring to me. Yeah. Yeah, literally, guys, this is a photo from our TV show, Broke Bites. This is 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I would say over the past like year and a half, I've definitely been on my own fitness and nutrition journey, Andrew. I've probably watched... 300 videos on this topic right i don't think everybody has to watch 300 videos but you could just watch this one but but here's the key here's the key andrew prior to those 300 videos and i've got the food videos to prove it i literally knew absolutely nothing you knew more than me right. i knew i didn't even know how to do a push-up i mean it was more about i would say you kind of knew but you didn't like it you hated working out i was adverse to it no you hated it you actually didn't identify as somebody who worked out right 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 and we're gonna get into the reasons why make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications check out smile sauce at smile sauce.com andrew i did not know what seco calories in calories out were i did not know what a macronutrient was i had no idea what the difference was between a simple and a clump complex carb if you showed me the I barely would have actually even recognized them. And of course, in terms of the more granular, detailed data, isometric, concentric, eccentric, I literally had no clue. Um, what we would do, Andrew, literally, what for me at least, is I would make food videos and then I would go play basketball. This is a famous fat hooper on TikTok, by the way. And here's the key, Andrew. You can't outwork a bad diet. Oh. So here are 25 things that I learned over the past year and a half as somebody who is literally completely new to this field. And I think the reason why this list is relevant, Andrew, is you can go to somebody who's been in a fitness their whole life, and the way they're going to present this information is different than people who just got into it. Right. Point number one, Andrew, everybody is going to respond to different types of self-talk because some people say, I want to work out. That doesn't hit the same internally with your own inner motivation soul. Like I want to be the type of person who works out or the type of women I want to attract like men who work out. Ooh, how you talk to yourself matters. Yes. It's almost like you, you don't think that it does because you are yourself, but actually it does, right? Because there's like multiple personalities within you or like, I don't know. Anyway, uh, also everybody in life has different motivations or sticks in life, Andrew. Some people respond to a carrot on the stick. Other people respond to being prodded by a stick. Other people want to have a stick to beat other people up or protect themselves from getting picked on by other people with big sticks. Or some people just have an internal Zen stick. Mm. So you kind of need to know what type of sticks as a person you respond to. Um, also, some people need an expensive gym membership, Andrew, because they want to be around other hot people. You know, like your vibe is your tribe. Some people really need to know that, and that's what gets them going. But other people might just need a bench and like dumbbells in their house. Right. So, because different people like respond to different stimuluses. And um, yeah, other people, Andrew, for your example, yourself, you're saying that some people want to take photos of themselves every day, but other people don't need to. Right. I mean, however you kind of motivate yourself or you remind yourself. How do you, how do you keep yourself accountable, right? Right. Um, or do you just derive dopamine from like looking in the mirror and you like how you look? Uh, there's so many different ways. You got to figure out what works for you. Number two, Andrew. Work out with lower weights, but with better form technique and go ultra slow, basically building that mind muscle connection. This is a relatively new thing in weightlifting. You're saying this is opposed to the good old like drop the bench on your chest and then pump it up and be like, oh, yeah, I feel strong because I'm going fast. I would say that that's a very high school football team weight room way of thinking about it. I think that nowadays, a lot of people, they want to get the same benefit to their muscle tension as heavyweights, but with less injury risk. Mm. So basically, they just take a lower weight than their max and they just go down really slow and they control it and it's ultra stable. They're not shaking. Right. Because basically, there's new research that shows that you can really build muscle and a lot of hypertrophy through just holding it and controlling the weight. Right, right, And really right. like sitting in the rep versus just like, you're just trying to use the gravity. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a pull-up doing a very super slow and being able to control the speed of the pull-up versus like, oh, I got to swing myself up. Right. Um, a lot of people compare it to a half swing in golf. Sometimes when you sh uh, shoot a golf ball with half the power, it goes further due to the technique. Also, a lot, Andrew, there's, for example, the way Steph shoots his jumper he shoots it way further but it looks more effortless 
like, you know, the Steph Curry, it looks so easy, right? Because it's all about muscle fiber activation. Point number three, make lifting weights part of your home lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, this is just like, a lot of people, they don't want to get up to the, go to the gym. I get it, get in a car. And it's like, sometimes you don't want to just have the weights laying around in front of your TV and literally watch TV or YouTube while you lift weights. And this is the easiest thing, you know, and make sure you just lift because I love like, I think mentally consuming content or information, whether you're watching YouTube videos or documentaries while you're doing something physical, it all connects and associates it together. So now you associate working out with enriching your brain too. Right, so whether you have the adjustable dumbbells or even just like a 20 or a 25 is enough to really get your workout in. Yeah. Like literally 20 pounds, 25 pounds, you don't need more than that. Obviously, if you're trying to become like a professional bodybuilder or amateur bodybuilder, you will need more than that. But for your average person that is watching this, 85% do not need more than a 25. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you lift a little bit of weights every day, it's gonna make a difference, you know? And if you just do it while you're at home, that's still a good start. Right, right. Yeah, obviously, it's not as good as a full gym, but like it could just fill in the days where you just can't make it. Point number four, Andrew, use sugar-free free syrups. This one's a little controversial because some people are against sugar-free syrups, sugar alternatives. I'm a big supporter of them. You know why? Uh -huh. Because over our lifetimes living in the Western world, first world countries, we have been conditioned to be addicted to sugars and our brain loves it but our bodies do not respond well to it. So sugar-free things, they give your brain the sugary impulse that it wants, but it doesn't do the damage on a caloric or insulin level to your body. Right. So I think that there's so many different like sugar alternatives. There's monk fruit, you know, that's a little bit more expensive. There's a lot of them. I'm not saying, dude, listen, you got to experiment with the artificial sweeteners because some of them are not going to work with your stomach and your genetics. But for me, I uh, unless I go crazy on them, I don't run into too many problems. Um, point number five, this is a little bit related, Andrew. If you can stop being a sugar addict, like most people are raised to be in the commercialized first world, a, a lot of stuff that's less sugary will begin to taste better. Yes. Um, when we're raised in America, Andrew, we eat a lot of like Fruit Loops. And the Fruit Loops is with uh, like, right, 2% or even non-fat milk. Some people use milk substitutes nowadays. Basically, people are just used to so much sugar that cutting up bananas and blueberries and yogurt tastes gross. You know what I mean? So I'm saying that once you sort of get yourself off the sugar kick, the stuff that is natural sugars will taste better that isn't as sweet. Right. Um, for example, if you're obsessed with peanut butter or even almond butter, you can use P2B. You can use protein powder that tastes like your favorite thing. Oh, I love putting vanilla cream and everything. Use vanilla cream protein powder. Mm. And you can use pea protein or whey protein. Whey protein has more calories, pea protein, but it tastes better, right? There's right, trade-offs. Right. Um, for example, Andrew, some people are saying, if you get low calorie graham crackers and then you get sugar-free yeah. whipped cream with sugar-free chocolate, freeze it, it will taste close enough to a s'more. You know what I mean? For somebody who loves s'mores, because actually, in actuality, it is true that if you want to look better, you can't eat s'mores. Like the right. real full on s'mores. Right. But, the, but here's the thing is you can find a substitute that is relatively close that satisfies those mental cravings. Point number six, schedule something right after your workout so your workout becomes way more efficient and you're not like one of those people at the gym that's like doing on their, sending out five texts for every five reps. Yeah, David, what's something that you do? All right, so be for honest, be honest, tell, tell the people. So I will say that uh, usually I hit the sauna and then maybe I got something to do, like a date. So I only have 20 minutes. In that 20 minutes, I feel very motivated. I put my phone away to just like crush a bunch of stuff. Ah, uh, right. Because this kind of goes back to the age old question. Do you work better with time or a deadline? Sometimes some people, when they know they're like, I got two hours to work out. Then you lollygag and you take that two hours very lax and you're not getting an actual good pump in, high energy pump. But if you know you only got 30 minutes, oh, and you got something to do, you're going to pump that. Right. Uh, I mean, it's human nature, guys. Like, listen, we're not all the most, we're not all David Doggins. Let's be honest. Right. Point number seven, find a few of the most nutrient packed foods that you love to eat and never will never stop loving to eat and focus on those to fill in a lot of gaps in your diet. Or just like make it, allow it to make up a bulk of your diet. For example, 
Um, some people really want to rotate meals, and that's why people are doing these like meal preps and all this stuff. For me, I know I love salmon, Japanese sweet potatoes, yakimo, any sort of dark meat chicken, and those are generally pretty good on nutrients, and I can eat those every single day, probably every single meal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I might want to put different sauces and different rubs on them or something like that, but I could eat it. Because Eric, here are a list of the most hyper-nutrient-dense things. I probably, the number one thing on there that only like ultra bodybuilder fitness guys eat is organ meats. I'm going to go ahead for myself, Andrew. I'm skipping the organ meats. Ooh. I'm skipping the beef liver, but I'm You're saying, not a liver king? But I like fish, shellfish, eggs, greens, mushrooms, seaweed. You know what I mean? Most people can eat a dish made of steak, eggs, avocado, berries, and yogurt every day. Right. Like none of those things are gross. Yeah, obviously the liver meat. It's just too much for me. I'm not trying to be like that uh, one guy who's trying to live forever. Point number eight, Andrew, use a supplement pill case. Uh, they have ones with like nine compartments, 12 compartments. And what I do is like, I never was good with taking vitamins because I hated unscrewing everything. But once I put everything in an organized pill case, I would just go down the line and actually it became a daily routine for me. It made something that was very challenging, very easy. Ah. Basically, we... Um, you take away the friction. Point number nine, make it cheap for yourself. Yeah, I mean, just working out doesn't have to be expensive. You don't even need a gym membership. Obviously, a gym membership can be very motivating. You can meet other people. It becomes a social thing. But you can buy dumbbells off Facebook Marketplace for like five bucks. Literally, someone is selling 15-pound dumbbells for 10 bucks off Facebook. The marketplace. And so you might be you able need. to get a whole set for like 30 or 50 Yeah, you can buy kettlebells for very cheap. You know what I mean? Like just buy weights. Yeah, no, it's true. Make it cheap for yourself. It does not have to be expensive. Point number 10. For lifts you don't enjoy doing, just use the machine version or something, a lift that you do more enjoy doing that's very similar. So for example, Andrew, for me, I hate doing free weight squats. It just never felt good on my shoulder. I don't care if there was a pad or no pad. It just never felt good to me. So for example, if I do have access to a hack squat or a V squat machine, which obviously is a little bit more advanced commercial gym equipment, I'll do that. Or of course you can do like a, a trap bar or something like that that gives you not one-to-one -one fully. It's not going to be fully similar, but it's a lot better than skipping that entire muscle group. Right. Like, you just kind of got to, like, figure out. Because if you think about it, a lot of people do a lot of different lifts, right? And there's a lot of different machines. But I, I was looking it up, and people only need a leg press or a hack squat, a lat pull down, and a bench press. And there are free weight versions, and there are machine versions of all those things. Mm. So literally, you only everybody's like doing all these different things, and you know there's a there's there's a lot of argument about free weights versus machines, and I guess I would compare it to lifting with machines. Andrew is a little bit like shooting, like doing basketball training with a shooting machine, and then lifting weights would be more like actually having like a pro trainer like pass you the ball, doing movement shooting drills, and actually having like a defender there. So it's like. You're both getting shots up and they're both going to be beneficial, but obviously the free weights are better. But for people who just literally cannot do free weights or they're scared of dropping the weights on their toes, just use the machines. Just get it done however you can. Um, point number 11, it's actually more about diet and sleep than lifting and exercising in terms of the details. Like if you had to weigh it out, everybody in life knows that taking care of yourself is a mixture of right, of what you're eating and what you're doing, but I'm saying it's probably even more heavily weighted on what you're eating. Oh. Like, if there's a lot of research out on this, and um, yeah, I, I think that that's the hardest part because, for example, Andrew, there's a lot of memes on the internet about how a lot of CrossFit people burn off a bunch of calories doing an hour of CrossFit, and then they go get beers together, or they go eat a bunch of sausages or tacos. Right. So basically, that's why CrossFit people kind of have that, like, lager, you know what I mean? Like a like a logger image. They look like they work at a steel mill or something like that. Like they're strong, but it doesn't, you know, look as trim. Point number 12 is, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, like if you look at all the things that are available, there's like high end options, there's middle end options, and then you can even strip it all away. So for example, look, a lot of people think at a high end celebrity level, you need like a personal chef, ultra expensive meal preps. You need like a $300 per month gym, right? 
At a mid-level option, Andrew, you just have your suburban grocery market. You have an air fryer. Then you have some at-home gym equipment. But if we were to strip it more even wet, like down to the bare bones, Andrew, there are some people in the world getting ripped with like literally like a third world or just really any style of like farmer's market, a hot pan, and a pull-up bar. Yeah. No, there's literally people getting more ripped than you with just access to those three things. Right. So it just depends. I think the the luxury and the gyms and everything like that, it just makes it easier or more fun or more appealing to your self-identity. But that's literally all you need. Point number 13, Andrew. People are conditioned to eat and love processed foods because they grew up on them. Right. And this is something that a lot of people need to understand. It's like you're better off eating an entire steak that you cooked with butter than eating a whole bunch of like cereal and french fries literally even breakfast cereal you're yeah. better off eating a buttered steak right which is crazy because a lot of people don't think that right because obviously that's just not the way we've been conditioned through media and things like that did you know andrew that actually the original food pyramid that everybody got educated in america that's been debunked was actually funded by like corn producers right so look how corrupt that whole situation was so everybody's got so much misinformation from their youth Point number 14, a lot of it boils down to education, emotional intelligence to follow through on that education and impulse control. So think about it, Andrew, you know, whether you have, you studied, you know, psychology 101, everybody always talks about it and ego, right? Andrew, sex, food, eating, pooping, sleeping. If you see people at their like very base level, and I'm not trying to call anybody out, but like, even like people on the street. That they're always doing one of these things. Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's almost like we have to get the education. Then we have to have the emotional intelligence to follow through on the education. And we have to control our impulses when it comes to these id and ego things. Sex, food, pooping, and sleeping. Oh, these man. are all human bodily functions. No, like the impulse control is so important. I try to, for desserts, I have like this three bite rule to enjoy a dessert. Is that you really don't need more than three bites to enjoy the dessert. Like, you take the first one, you're like, wow. Second one, you're like, all right, I'm into it. And then the third one, you're like, all right, it's in my memory. I know how it tastes. I enjoyed it. And, like, by just doing those little tricks and, like, limiting yourself when you need to, uh, it builds good habits. You're talking about the law of diminishing value. Yeah. Marginal value. Point number 15, Andrew, walk more because walking at least 10,000 steps is so key. A lot of people think that running is better than walking but there's been a ton of research, modern research, that has shown that walking burns off more fat stores than running. Right. Because running actually taps into carb stores. Now, obviously, if you run a lot, it's still going to work. But guess what's going to happen after you run a lot? Your appetite is going to spike. And most people feel like they put in a five-mile run, they get to reward themselves. Right, right, Walking right. does not do that for you. So you're better off just doing like an incline walk at the gym, you know what I mean, on your treadmill and just doing that for like 10, 15,000 steps, you will lose weight. I'm not saying you're going to get like as buff as the person running or something like that, not, not your muscle fibers, but I'm talking about purely uh, fat loss. Point number 16, at least once in your life, go get a full blood lab for testosterone and go get your bone density tested with a DEXA scan. So basically, people usually think these uh, you only need these if your like body's about to fall apart or you like develop a condition or you're a pro athlete, but everybody should go and get these things. And oftentimes it's covered by insurance. Uh, point number 17, androgens matter. Stress will mess up your ability to recover and even process all the work you've put in while you've worked out. So I'm saying there's a lot of androgens and obviously testosterone is the most well-known androgen. I'm gonna just pop up all these things like this, but cortisol spikes, insulin spikes, all that stuff matters. You know what I mean? Like um, nobody ever will teach you about like managing androgen levels unless you seek out the information yourself. Like nobody just gives you that info. Point number 18, use nasal strips and sinus rinses before you work out. See that? Well, you got a little bit of a cold right now, right? Yeah, nasal strips are huge, man. Definitely buy these. Uh, are you trying just, to be Alex Hormozzi? Man, I wish we got money like him. But uh, I wish, uh, honestly, it just helps you breathe better, um, especially when you're congested. Look, I mean, even some race horses actually have nasal strips because, you know, horses have those big-ass nostrils, and so it just opens it up for them. But uh, honestly, 
do the nasal rinse, do the nasal strip, guys. Uh, especially, it just helps you intake oxygen, so it's just better for you. Yeah, a lot of people they they might not even understand why they don't feel like going to the gym that day. Their eyes are dry. They're not breathing good. Get Lipiflow. You know, whatever you need to do to stimulate your eye glands. Get fix your breathing. You'd be surprised. You might feel a lot more motivation, and you didn't even uh, identify those systemic root causes. Point number nineteen. Everybody sort of knows what to do, but they're not being selective enough on shortcuts to actually make them do it. Do you agree, Andrew, that most people in the educated first world, they know that you shouldn't eat bad stuff, right? They know you should work out more, but why is everybody essentially failing to do it? Right. It's because I feel like a lot of people are not finding the winning hacks for themselves. For example, these hacks might, you know, they work for me, but they might not work for you um, watching, but I'm just letting you guys know that there are hacks, Andrew. In the morning, I will drink a five-calorie cold brew, which is essentially, there's almost no calories in cold brew, right? I will mix it with a Coke Zero or a Pepsi Zero, and I will mix it with a little bit of pea protein vanilla powder, and that's my coffee to start the day. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, I might put creatine powder in it too, so basically I've already like, checked off a bunch of boxes with my morning coffee for no calories, basically. Mm. Obviously, there is a little bit of calories in the creatine. I mean, you can use sugar-free flavors in there if you want it to taste like your favorite Frappuccino or things like that. For example, like things, I don't like it when people are like, oh man, you do that? Like all that caffeine's not good for you or the creatine's not good for you. Of course, every sort of like uh, supplement, you know, or whatever you intake, there's a pro and a con to it, but you just have to weigh out if the pros outweigh the cons for your situation in the given moment. For example, Andrew, another hack. You you like chicken breast. Is this correct? Yeah. I hate chicken breast. Yeah. I cannot eat chicken breast. Why? I can only eat chicken thighs. That's crazy. But it's all good because even though they have more calories, you know what chicken thighs also have over chicken breast? Cheaper. More nutrients. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because of the skin and stuff like that. Yes, you are intaking more calories with the skin and more fat, but also I fat, mean, it's not I necessarily know, let's bad. Be honest, chicken thighs tastier. It tastes 2x better, and the, maybe the macros are like 1.3 worse. So actually, if you balance 2x on the taste, 1.3x worse on the other things, it balances out. For example, I always needed a water bottle to go to the gym with the electrolyte water. I used to hate cleaning my water bottle, and then I realized if you throw the... Uh, Retainer tablets in there, it completely train, uh, cleans your water bottle overnight. So that is even a hack that helps me. And there are other hacks that help people. Ranch seasoning with Greek fat-free yogurt tastes almost ex exactly like sour cream. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of things where people are just, ah, oh, I just can't give up ranch. I can't give up sour cream in my tacos. Use yogurt. Point number 20, there are even lifting shortcuts if you really are just going for a look over functional strength, uh, for example, if you target your upper chest instead of a flat bench press and you do a military press, Andrew, it generally is more aesthetic to do upper chest than right. lower chest. Um, also, if you work out your lower ab, which is usually the, the last two abs that get neglected, neglected the most, the other top four will still get hit. Right. But if you do the top four, it doesn't mean the bottom two will get hit, the five and six. Um, also, for dumbbell stuff, Andrew, like I used to always think I'd be like, dude, people look so dumb at the gym and they're just like doing this. I didn't realize there's so much stuff from the CrossFit world, from this world, from that world, where you can kind of do like, a, they call it a dumbbell complex combo, where basically you're doing like a hand clean with like a hammer or with like all stuff in one lift. Like one rep, it actually is like, looks more fun. Point number 21, Andrew, do whatever it takes to get yourself going. Wow. What do you mean? Like do drugs? Like I'm saying saunas. Like some people are like, oh, don't sauna before you work out because like you're going to sap yourself of the energy. Sometimes I need to feel sweaty before I even lift. Oh. Okay. Because like just for myself, I don't know if it's like a mental block. I think it kind of feels gross to get sweaty just lifting. You know what I mean? Um, other people, whatever they need to do, if you need to stretch, if you need to do this, if you need to do that, obviously like... Some people need to just get their glutes going before they feel comfortable doing anything. Like, you got to know yourself. Some people take Zins, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that nicotine is, like, the best for you. But if that's what it takes, then just do it. 
You know what I mean? Like some people need to ride their bike to the gym to make sure they feel like everything's flowing. Like whatever it takes for you to feel like that's what it took you to get the ball rolling, just get the ball rolling. Point number 22, Andrew, body fat percentage is actually way more important than where you fall on old school metrics like BMI or for example, a regular scale. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy when I went to the doctor then they told me that my BMI was above, was too heavy or something. Right. I was like, wait, me? Are you talking? What are you kidding? Well, because you're like slightly ectomorphic. Yeah, and I was like, I don't understand what, why, who cares what the BMI is then? Who cares? Yeah, I'm, I'm slightly endomorphic, which is like the widest body type. And it's like, I was always tracking way over on BMI. Yeah, BMI is stupid. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Listen, guys, for $100 in 2024, there are new release scales with relatively accurate body fat percentage sensors. Like, finally. You know, I know for a long time, a lot of the body fat stuff was not very uh, accurate. I'm not saying it's as accurate as, like, going to get a DEXA scan. I'm just saying for at-home use, seems like a pretty good compromise. Point number 23, for tracking, Andrew... For me, I don't know about, I never could do the Apple Watches. I got an Apple Watch. It does not feel comfortable to wear on my wrist. I'm more looking at the Fitbit Inspire 3 or uh, the Vivo Smart Watches that are like really thin. And I just think that, you know, it depends on everybody. Some people, they might be able to lift with like an Apple Watch Ultra or whatever. It just feels like huge on my wrist. Point number 24, for me, Andrew, I learned to just hate processed foods. What does that mean? Like, basically, when you're growing up, you're conditioned to really like low-end things because of this commercialized food environment we, we just grow up in in America, right? I'm saying you have to unlearn that and learn to, like, look at processed foods, not that you never eat them, but as essentially something that you want to stay away from. And once you learn to stay away from it and you actively dislike it, you don't need to burn up your willpower bar to fight against it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like when you like something and you're keeping yourself from it, you're actually burning up this finite willpower bar that everybody like has every day when they wake up. Mm -hmm. So I don't need that because I need my willpower bar for other things. Right. You know what I mean? If I'm just like loving all these terrible things and there's so many new Asian bakeries, Andrew, with like double matcha croissants filled with like ube cream in New York right now. And I don't even have a desire to go get it. Wow. I'm not saying I won't get it for you guys in a video if you guys want to see it. I will get it and I will eat it. But I'm just saying, you know, Andrew, there was a few Japanese fruit sando spots that opened up. I didn't even go. I've had a Japanese fruit sando before. I don't need to know what it tastes like. Had them in Japan, had them outside of Japan. Point number 25, a lot of it is just making certain stuff on autopilot. You know, for example, Andrew, a lot of people, there's been a lot of studies on why are people in prison so buff? Why do you think people in prison are so buff? Because that's all they're doing. Well, a lot of it is, but they're actually doing a lot of calisthenics all day. They do get fed four times a day, interestingly enough, Andrew. But you know what the big thing they noticed was? Because they don't have TVs in their cells. They were just sleeping a ton. Oh. They're getting like nine hours of dark sleep because there's no windows in the cells either. Dude, so you're just sleeping and working out. Yeah. So your body's like able to recover from the working out. Right. Because basically like everything, in, one thing I want to tell people is like a lot of things in life, you have these like buckets in your chest. And once you fill up that bucket, you can't really fill it anymore. That's why there's all those studies saying, oh, after you make like $250,000 a year or whatever, making another 250,000 doesn't make you any more happy because you've already filled that bucket and the bucket is overflowing and the bucket cannot hold anymore. Um, obviously having a home gym, you know, a home little bench press, home little adjustable dumbbells, you know, whatever. Just make it autopilot mode. Everything on autopilot mode. And last but not least, Andrew, uh, I just think make it fun for yourself, but also just don't give up the 85% for the 15%. Um, for when, I, when I was starting on this fitness journey, Andrew, we had a hardcore trainer. And the trainer, I did learn from him. I did learn how to do some of the lifts more properly, you know, control the weight to build that mind muscle, muscle connection. But some of the stuff that he was telling us to do or telling me to do was just too much. He was telling me to like cut up chicken on Sunday night and like freeze it in the bags and like weigh it out on a kitchen scale. I'll tell you this, that did not work for me. 
But I didn't give up on my journey just because I couldn't fit what the trainer told me to do. Right. I just took what he learned, uh, taught me, and I paid him to teach me. But then I made it applicable for what realistically I could uh, sustain and execute on. Right. You had to figure out a way to enjoy it yourself because ultimately doing all like thinking that much about it was going to deter you from even doing it at all. Right. Yeah. For example, like some people are like, absolutely no fast food, right? But like I said, sometimes if I go to like a Shake Shack or Wendy's or something like that, I get the lettuce wrap cheeseburger. And then instead of getting fries, I just get another cheeseburger. Wow. If I'm really hungry, you know what I'm saying? Because I had to be that strict on the simple carbs. Right. So I just think it's like this, man. One thing I realized after watching 300 videos on fitness is there's a really hyper simple way to think about it. Just eat really clean, like one ingredient foods and lift consistently. And there's really complex ways to think about it. That's why there's like 500 fitness channels where people are literally just explaining fitness on a physiological level every single day on YouTube. Right. You know what I mean? It's almost like sneaker reviewers, Andrew. You, there's all these people making a living explaining what basketball sneakers you should buy. But in a way, it could be as simple as if you're a light player, Andrew, get a GT cut or a Kobe. If you're a middle tier player in terms of weight, get a KD or a LeBron. And if you're a heavy player, get a Jordan or a GT jump. It's as simple as that, but it could also get as granular and atomized and as detailed as you want it to get. Right. So ultimately, guys, that's what I learned. I mean, you guys saw the charts that I popped up. Hopefully some of these things you did know or it's things that you didn't know or maybe I worded it in a way because literally, I'm telling you, prior to 18 months ago, I did not even know what calories in, calories out meant. I had zero exposure. I was spending all my time eating. Right. So listen, guys. I mean, just to share this last thing with you, I think a lot of it was like running the food channel. I had already eaten everything almost in the world. I'd already eaten everything. So it does make it a little bit easier for me to not eat certain things nowadays. Right, right, right. Because I'm like, yeah, sort of been there, done that. I want to focus on fitness. Anyway, guys, like I said, I'm not 10 out of 10 serious on it. Hopefully all the charts were helpful. Let me know what you think in the comment section below of my working out tips, dieting things. What are things that you have learned? Like I said, I'm not a guru. I'm just trying to share with you guys my own personal journey. So it's something that you guys can relate to and uh, apply to yourself, your own life, or share it with somebody else. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.